the 1880s, the founder of judo, Jigeru Kano, developed a system to rank his students and group them up according to their skill. The culmination of this ranking is the famous black belt. Since that time, the vast majority of martial arts taught here in America have adopted this belt ranking system. You can see it, of course, in the grappling arts such as judo and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You also see it in arts such as karate and taekwondo, and it's even begun to catch traction in various systems of kung fu. However, what a black belt actually is will vary from system to system, and how hard it is to get a black belt is also something that will vary from system to system. For some schools, the black belt is simply going to be a marker that the student has completed the curriculum, whereas other people, the black belt is going to be a marker that that person is prepared to teach, whereas even then, some are going to have a much higher standard, that the black belt would put someone on a professor level, level or even higher. However, this video is not about the black belt itself, but rather the journey to black belt in whatever art you're studying. Now, in the past, I've been awfully critical of various versions of the belt ranking system, and I hold true to most of those stances. However, the very art that I teach, CDS, has a belt ranking system that goes from white belt all the way to black belt. And I have my own opinions about what a black belt actually means. But that process of getting there, the process of heading towards that black belt, is actually one that is far more interesting to look at and far more interesting to dissect. So what am I actually talking about in this video? Well, I'm going to be talking about belt racing. Belt racing is the idea of someone joining a martial art and trying to get to black belt as fast as possible. I want to take some time to talk about why that is not so much a good practice and why it's frowned upon in the world of martial arts. But I'm also going to take a moment to discuss why maybe belt racing isn't as bad as we make it out to be. So let's dive into it. There are many martial arts schools that are what we call belt factories. And the idea is you sign up and they basically guarantee that in two to three years you'll have a black belt. And that black belt, in my opinion, is no more legitimate than one that you might have printed out at home. But for the martial arts that have very legitimate black belts, the temptation for the student is to always be seeking that next rank and pushing towards it as quickly as possible. In the martial arts circles that I run in, we have a saying that the easiest way to get your black belt is to not care about getting a black belt. Just simply care about the information that your teacher is giving you and try to master that information and just accept the ranks as they come. Ultimately, the belt is just meant to hold your pants up or keep your gi closed, and it's a knowledge that actually matters. If you end up getting a black belt, but you forget everything that you learned when you were a white belt, well, then is your black belt really of that much value? If you end up getting your black belt, but you haven't taken the time to develop the skill that you need to actually get good at the art, is that black belt actually legit? The problem with belt racing, trying to get a belt as quickly as possible, trying to get that next rank as quickly as possible, is oftentimes in that hurried rush to the next rank, you will find yourself neglecting to continue to practice your old stuff. Another saying that I tell my students all the time is advanced martial arts is the basics done incredibly well. Whatever I taught you when you were a white belt is what you should be practicing as a black belt. It's not that I've, as you go through the system, that I've given you this whole new breadth of information that replaces the old stuff. It's that the old stuff is refined and, and honed to the point in which I can call you an advanced practitioner in the art. That's what a black belt actually is. Ultimately, the amount of time it takes to get about five years worth of experience in martial arts is five years every single time. There's no real way to rush this process. Rushing through the system as fast as you can not only is going to most likely result in you forgetting a lot of the older information that you originally learned, but it's also going to mean that you're going to forget the information a lot faster. Another saying that we have is if it's quick to learn, it's quick to forget. The people who take a very long time to learn a technique will oftentimes keep that technique 
in their mind for a much longer period of time. It's also a bit disrespectful to your instructor to rush through their curriculum as though that whatever they're teaching you is really not that important. It's really more of a stepping stone towards your ultimate goal. However, if the teacher is taking the time to run you through these techniques, they're clearly important towards the art that you're studying. And you need to respect that part of the process and take the time not only to learn it, but to get really good at it. It's kind of the difference between someone getting a D on a test and an A on a test. I don't want to get a black belt by getting a D on my test. I want to get an A plus on my black belt test. And the only way to do that is to put in the time and put in the effort. And that's the reason why it's frowned upon in the world of martial arts to belt race. It seems disrespectful and it almost guarantees that you're going to be missing out on a lot of the finer details that ultimately will make you a better fighter in the long run. But I also said at the top of this video that sometimes belt racing is okay. So when is belt racing okay and why on earth would I condone it? If a martial art has a ranking system that is based off of actual knowledge, actual applied skill, if your goal is to get good as quickly as possible, now that is a belt racing strategy that I can get behind. Let me explain. If you have two people, one person who attends class once a week and another person who attends class seven times a week, if this person doesn't practice outside of class and this person adds an additional two to three hours every single day of practice outside of their already seven days a week worth of practice within the school, well, there's no doubt that this guy is going to get better faster than this guy. Another common saying that I throw around my school is that my attention is bought with shits given. The more you care about what I'm teaching you, the more invested I become in you as your instructor. That if I see somebody who wants to spar every single time I get do an open mat, if I want to see somebody who puts in extra hours outside of class, they send me emails and text messages about something that they're working on and they have questions, I know that that is going to be a person who's going to rank at a much faster rate than the person who comes to my class very casually, maybe trains with me once a week, and when they leave, that's basically when they stop thinking about what I'm teaching. This is also kind of a form of belt racing, but instead of trying to get the rank fast, the person is concerned with getting good as quickly as possible. I cannot stress enough that if you want to spend eight hours a day developing your skill, you're probably going to get good a lot faster than the guy who's only put an hour in. If your martial arts school is producing skilled fighters and their black belts don't get beaten up by yellow belts from other schools, there's a good chance your school is a pretty good martial arts school. And those belts are going to serve as markers along your journey. If your number one goal is to get that black belt, well, you're probably going to be hard pressed to actually get to that rank in a legitimate martial arts school. However, if your goal is to get black belt good and you're pushing every single day and working as hard as you possibly can to get black belt good, you never miss an opportunity to spar. You never miss an opportunity to compete. You put in hundreds and hundreds of hours all year long in addition to the hundreds of hours within the gym. You put them in outside the gym. Yeah, you very well may be able to get black belt good much faster. Hicks and Gracie has a saying I always liked, which is uh, the, the black belt only covers about two inches of your ass and it's your job to protect the rest. And I think that's a good way to look at it. Ultimately, the belt ranking system means nothing. Your skill in combat is the only thing that counts when it actually happens. When someone actually attacks you or you have a friendly match with one of your friends, your skill is what matters. It doesn't matter that you're a black belt. If you can imagine somebody who got a degree in, we'll say English, but they are actually terrible at English, well, their degree doesn't matter. There's plenty of great writers who don't have degrees, and there's plenty of people with degrees who are terrible writers. 
ultimately the degree doesn't really matter as much as your actual skill. And that's what a black belt actually is. A black belt is simply your instructor recognizing your efforts and your knowledge and your contribution to the art. Your job isn't to get a black belt. Your job is to get good. And then the black belt will come naturally. If you're interested in studying self-defense with me here in Indianapolis, all the information you need to do so is in the description box down below or on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. You guys know how YouTube works. You got to click a million buttons, but help me out and click that like button and subscribe. Until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.